Fallout 4 is a game that has a smorgasbord of weapons from which you can choose from to complete it. From the pipe pistol, to the pipe pistol, to the pipe pistol. But what if I was to tell you that you've been playing this game wrong this entire time? No! God, please, no! Can you beat Fallout 4 unarmed? Now behind every great story, there is a hero. And today I'd like to introduce to you the greatest American man to walk through the Commonwealth, shooting patriotism from his fists with a permanent broken knows. Ladies and gentlemen, Hulk Grogan. Now, to be the greatest Wish.com wrestler in the Commonwealth, there are some specific stats needed to be used. I dumped 10 straight into strength to make his fists more useful than a line of cocaine, and went straight for 9 agility as there's a specific skill at level 9 that we need from the start to make this run interesting. And obviously we need as many action points as possible. And dumped the rest in endurance because after the many years of drug abuse, the Hulkster he just doesn't have as much gas in the tank anymore. After single-handedly causing the nuclear explosion with my fists and checking out my potential next love affair, it was time to rest my muscles and take an ice bath, only to get rudely interrupted by a bald man in a gun who decided to shoot my wife and steal my kid. Now I'll be lying to you if I said that I was sad. I'm just disappointed that he didn't use his fists. So off I went to spread the good word down in Concord, letting the local crackheads know who somehow managed to turn their pipes into pistols, that one fist a day will keep the doctor away, and also where I learnt the true power of my fists. Looking like Magic Mike of the Commonwealth, I decided to lend a helping hand to a crazed homeless man stuck inside the building, and no matter how many times I said no, he still wanted me to help. So off I went down the main street of Concord to fist Dirty Gristle and all of his boys to death. And boy, did I enjoy it. But also forgetting the frightful fact that there's a death claw. I actually forgot that there was a death claw that comes here. I know, I don't know how I forgot about it. But little did Mr. Deathclaw know, I had a bit of a sneaky plan up my sleeve. I think we all have a good idea how silly the Fallout 4 physics can be. So off to the corner store I went to sell him some punches, only to be receiving multiple refunds and customer complaints. And well, also my fusion core ran out. But this did not stop me whatsoever, as my T-clip fists were on another level of animal abuse as I was finally able to take down that lizard. As I was making my way downtown, I got a little bit peckish, so I decided I decided to go to the local diner only to find that I was not going to get served. So I took matters into my own hand and fisted Trudy so good she didn't even see it coming. To which then I discovered that I didn't even need to be remotely near anybody to even hit them. To then find out it goes both ways. As I made it to Diamond City, I headed up to the main office to try and earn some extra caps. But it turns out Jennifer isn't the pain sort, so again I took matters into my own hands. Which didn't end so well, so I decided to head down to the market and watch the fan favorite synth or dare. Yeah, better luck next time. With the sudden urge for some light reading, I decided to head out to find a store called Hubris Comics, only to be mauled to death by a pack of dogs, which I was okay with, only to return to show them the true meaning of death. And if you thought super mutants were stupid, imagine his face when I T-clip through the stairs. <laughs> This is so silly. <laughs> Arriving at Hubris Comics, I knew that I was in for a challenge. The crazed ghoul orgy that was in front of me was one of the most unwelcoming things my permanently broken nose had to face. It was my turn to now experience the great fisting. But through the pain and pleasure, I knew, I knew at the end, it was all going to be worth it. Because no way in hell was I going to let that radioactive Mr. Burn take away my precious loincloth. Perfection. Just the side note, if you do end up coming to the comic store, do not forget to pick up the photo, the script, the silver shroud costume, and also the SMG. There is a ghoul and good neighbor in the memory den that's going to reward you with an upgraded costume and also a usable SMG and some bottle caps, allowing you to live that cosplay fantasy. With my cool new threads, I thought it was about time that I head down to the local pool to try and impress some girls, which didn't quite work out and ended up getting a lifetime ban for public indecency leaving me no choice but to head down to Park Street Station to save our old friend Nick from Skinny Maloney and his Malonies. Which those pizza pasta, chicken parmigiana, spaghetti eating Commonwealthian Italian stood no chance against these dough bashing fists. Even Dino was surprised when I snuck up behind him and whispered in his ear, Pineapple pizza! before I snapped his neck. With such genocidal acts, Nick agreed to join my crusade to wipe out the Italians of the Commonwealth, allowing me to take up Malone, single-handedly assault a woman, granting me the title Godfather of the Commonwealth, 
With our return to Diamond City, it was time for us to break into a cereal brand's house. And lucky enough for Nick, the first time I came into Diamond City and seduced the mayor's receptionist, I managed to steal the key, making him look like an absolute idiot. Learning about the location of the cereal box, it was about time we hit off again. On our journeys, we ended up running into a heroin addicted Yogi Bear. Another opportunity to put the fists to work again. Heading into Fort Hagen, I knew I was coming up for another challenge. Since I'm made out of metal, my hands are made out of flesh. Physical resistance is going to be a problem, but the fresh smell of cereal was far too prominent in my nose for me to back down. One teleport punch at a time, I managed to get through with only the occasional death. Even the laser turrets were no match for my fists of glory. Leaving no time to spare, I made quick work of Kellogg, making him look like a bowl of soggy cornflakes. Stole his brain, went back to the memory dead and good neighbor, accessed his perverted memories, only to find that the institute has a kidnapping teleportation fetish. Off to the glowing sea we go, to find wish.com Bruce Banner. Making my way across the wasteland, I thought it was a good idea to once again check where my fists were at. So I ran it straight at a suicide of super mutant and here are my results. If you time it perfectly, you're invulnerable to the damage of the mini nuke. Use this power responsibly. And yes, super mutants are the bane of my existence. Arriving at Bruce Banner's humble abode in the glowing sea, we learn about the corset chip and lie straight to the nerd's face, telling him we're gonna get the serum and help change him back. Because apparently having a massive green co- Remembering how much of a pussy I was back in Concord fighting the giant reptilian, I thought it was about time to redeem myself. To which I regretted the choice I made and learnt the hard way not to try and kite around a car, but to be the strongest permanently broken nose loincloth wearing man in the commonwealth, I needed to prove it. And prove myself I did. This was the perfect validation that I needed to know that I am the Kite Master 5000. Enter Green Tech Genetics. With only one thing on my mind, get the course of chip and get out, the true power of the fists came out screaming, exploding turrets, dodging missiles. No human was left alive because I seemingly took too long and the courser ended up killing all the hostages. <laughs> He was simply no match for me. My fists were world destroyers. Give me the wrong look and I'll give you a taste of the T-clip fist. Bathing in all my glory, I decide to soak in the sights before jumping off the building to remind myself that I'm not a synth. Friendly reminder, just be careful when you vat punch somebody because you can get yourself stuck in some very peculiar situations. Fast forward two hours, we're now at the Old North Church, the headquarters of the railroad. After Devin simped for me to get inside, I handed the chip over to Tinker Tom and with all the information that I needed to carry on, the downfall of the railroad began by fist. Drummer boy, you will not be missed. The next course of actions were seemingly the worst decision that I could possibly make playing Fallout 4. I went to Preston, purely for the fact for whatever reason the Brotherhood of Steel had some innate hate for me, and while well, I acted on it. After pointless hour, after pointless hour of helping settlements around the wasteland, I was finally able to get into the Institute, who I met a young boy called Sean who practically yelled rape and got a fright as an old man walked through the door and deleted him before he could say a word. Once again, Preston had no idea what the fuck was going on and wanted me to do more settlement work, which I did and finally made it to the point where I could take back the castle, which really made me regret choosing this quest line. Single-handedly, me and Preston took back the castle with a lot of losses and a lot of deaths as well. Even with Preston going full Vietnam, the legendary Myalurk took us for all that we had. But wait, <laughs> there's more. Enter Myalurk Queen. Yas Queen, she slay.
to only find defending the castle becomes a completely new nightmare. Especially from the onslaught of Will Smiths that appear out of nowhere. Yeah. All Minutemen had failed me and I was left to single handedly once again fight my way to glory. And I kid you not, this was quite literally the point that nearly broke me and nearly ended my run. This was the most frustrating experience of a quest with your fists that you can do. You are constantly gang banged by laser bullets no matter where you are and they will find you and hunt you down. As the last Will Smith clone dropped to the floor, it was finally time to take down the Institute. Ooh. With only one thought in mind, take no prisoners, no one survives. With the full force of the Minuteman behind my back, I knew this would be an easy task. Battling our way through way of synths, taking down sentry bots, finally making our way to the reactor where I was to place the one and only pulse charge. No institute member was to walk out alive, not even that sorry excuse of a robot son Sean. I had finally made it to the finish line and it only took me 12 hours. 12 hours of punching everything that I could see by teleportation across the room. Don't get me wrong, this was really fun. Hence why I went back to Swan Pond just to fight Swan and get revenge. To only then get a sense of remorse because I crippled it so badly that the challenge kinda lost purpose. But it still felt good. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a like. And if there's any other challenges you think that are worthy of Fallout 4, let me know in the comments below. Until the next one, have yourself a fantastic day.